Well, greetings, Series 7 test takers. This is the Series 7 guru coming to you from my studio here in fabulous Las Vegas with another explication request. This is a convertible question. I will, in the video description, link to my entire lecture on convertibles, and I'll also add that as a pinned comment. All right, so let's get started. The first thing in the question says that the uh, conversion price is $50 a share. I can't stress this to you enough. On your exam, whenever you get the conversion price, you need to establish the conversion ratio. So let me turn over my timer here. I'm trying to bring these explications in at uh, certain things. So conversion price, remember that's based on par. So the first thing you need to do when you get one of these things is establish the conversion ratio. We do that, the conversion terms are based on par. So we're gonna take par and we're gonna divide that by the conversion price. And now I'm back in business because now I have the conversion ratio. I can get 20 shares of the common for each one of these uh, bonds. And so that's our first uh, thing is to get that conversion ratio. So 20 shares is the conversion ratio. Let's put that in there. And just like I say about the exam itself, inch by inch parity calculations are a cinch, yard by yard, they are hard. Now, the next thing they tell us in the question is that the current market price of the stock is 65. And they tell us that the uh, bond, the convertible bond, is trading for 120, a 120% of par. And so they tell us that in the question. So the convertible bond is priced, current market price, the convertible. I'll put, uh, I'll try and be consistent how I'm laying this out. So uh, current market price of the convertible bond is 120. Now, again, you can't be fumbling around that 120 is $1,200. That's 120% of par. And so that's important. Uh, now they say, you know, uh, what should we do, you know, in this scenario? Now, there's a couple ways to proceed here. Uh, one way I could proceed is think, okay, well, Gee, you know, if I can turn uh, that bond into 20 shares of a $50 stock, or excuse me, a $65 stock, you know, uh, this bond should be worth, let me get on my calculator. Let me get a different color here. Uh, I'm taking the 20 shares times 65. Wow. Parity of the bond, this bond, it seems like I found a free lunch here. You know, parity of the bond is $1,300 and it's trading for $1,200. So it looks like we have discovered an arbitrage opportunity. Arbitrage is profiting from price discrepancies. Now, another way I could have done this, uh, I can't imagine any draw, by the way, where in which you're not going to have to do a calculation uh, parity. So I'm going to just do both. I'm going a little overboard on here, but, you know, because I think you're going to see it. So let me get my picture out of the way there. Discrepancies. Am I selling that rightly? I think so. Arbiter is profiting from price discrepancy. By the way, that could be a test question. They could just point blank say, you know, profiting from price discrepancy can best be described as, and you got to come up with uh, arbitrage. It looks like a typo in arbitrage. Oh, well. Okay, so now the other way I could have proceeded here is I could say, well, if I pay $1,200 for this bond, and I can convert this into 20 shares of the stock, uh, parity, I would be paying the equivalent of, let me get out my calculator again, 1,200 divide by 20, 
is 60. Wow, I'd be able to get the stock for 60 and the stock's at uh, 65. So again, I've discovered just another way of discovering this arbitrage opportunity. Boom, right? So that's parity of the stock. Parity just means when they're equal. So paying $1,200 for this bond is the equivalent of paying $60 for the stock, which is a screaming deal. It's a screaming deal because there's a price discrepancy, right? Or another way we could say it is if you pay, uh, you know, get the bond, you get 20 shares of a $65 stock, that would be the equivalent of a bond that would be worth $1,300. So now, as you know, Dean always says, fire up the tea. We always want to be able to track money in and out of somebody's account. And so uh, now the question says, how do you best profit from this situation? And you're given various choices about, you know, whether you should buy, you know, five bonds. By the way, the, the denomination they're using is buy five bonds and then sell the stock or buy the stock and sell the bonds. Those are all your, your choices. So before I get going on that, though, let me put out and in. Boom. Let's put that in green. Okay, so uh, I think I definitely, we shopped the answer set and it says uh, we should buy five bonds. I think, yeah, we should definitely buy the five bonds. I mean, there's, I don't think there's any doubt that if we see this trading for less than parity, there's an arbitrage opportunity. Usually it would be trading at a premium. Here we have an arbitrage opportunity. So one of the choices is, should we buy the five bonds? And the answer is yes. So if I buy five of these bonds, for 1200 I'm going to be out $6,000 for the five bonds. So let's put that there. Uh, let's put that in uh, red to recognize that that is money out. Right. And then let's just make a note to ourselves that what we did here is the five bonds at 1200 So... Okay, now this says, what should I do now, <laughs> right? So, you know, uh, arbitrage is profiting from price discrepancies, not recognize them. And I think what I should do now is uh, turn the bonds into the stock, right? Because if I have five of these bonds, each of them are convertible into 20 shares, I now have the ability to get 100 shares of the stock. And so what I think I should do is, boom. Yeah, again, I'm just trying to make it look neat is uh, sell uh, 100 shares at the current price of uh, 65. And then the way I'm going to make delivery is through converting. So the odds are going to be, let's put that there. That's the selling of the 100 shares at 65. And boom, let's put that there. And let's just make a note to what we did here. Uh, please note, we made $500 from uh, in this price discrepancy. Um, and so we're looking for the answer that says, buy five bonds and sell 100 shares at 65. Now I would just make one more point here. The last point I would make is there's two types of arbitrage. There is risk arbitrage, and risk arbitrage is where you have the risk of leaving this open, right? So in other words, the risk we have in this question, we don't have a choice about selling short the 100 shares. But my point is, you know, we have two types of arbitrage here. We have what's called risk arbitrage. And what I mean by that is you have the risk that by the time you turn this into the stock and make delivery, this thing could be, you know, could move away from you. And so that's risk arbitrage. What we're doing here is risk arbitrage. But we also have riskless arbitrage, and that's where I go long and short the same uh, time. So that's not available to me in this uh, this question. It's just the only choice that makes economic sense here is I buy the five bonds and I sell 100 shares. But the even smarter thing to be able to do would be to buy the five bonds, sell short the 100 shares at 65, lock in that price discrepancy. And the way I'm going to get back the borrowed stock is by converting the bonds into that round lot, that 100 shares. So uh, I don't think it's a big deal on the test, but as I said, I will link uh, to my my uh, lecture on this. 
Okay, I hope you found that helpful. Uh, kudos to you guys that are working through the holidays. I'm with you in spirits. Uh, remember, inch by inch, your Series 7 is a cinch. Yard by yard, your Series 7 is hard. And I'll see you for the next explication uh, request, if not sooner. Bye-bye. Happy holidays.